Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Michael Buys Expensive Things from Japan. In today's episode, we're going to be unboxing this Japanese Nintendo GameCube. But first, let me give you a little backstory as to why I even had to buy this thing in the first place. So there I was a few months ago browsing on the Electronic Bay trying to find a Game Boy player that I could use for an upcoming video project. When I quickly realized that these things are not cheap, especially the game disc that you need to have with the Game Boy Player itself to make the thing functional. So I said, huh, let me check the Japanese auction websites. I did, I found this for less money, slightly less money than what it would have cost me to get just the Game Boy Player and that disc here in the US. So when you think about it, this wasn't really that expensive at all because I got all this other stuff essentially for free. But this was still a decent amount of money. That's why I gotta thank today's video sponsor, Skillshare, for giving me the skills to spend money on things that I otherwise wouldn't need. Anyways, let's talk a little bit about this particular bundle right here and what you would have got if you were in Japan back in 2004 when this came out and if you happen to have 19,800 yen to spend on this thing, because that's how much this thing cost. Inside of this box, not only do you get the GameCube itself, but also these two controllers. One of them is a special edition clear GameCube controller that I did not know existed until I found out about this bundle. Uh, this was only made available in Japan through this bundle. So this is quite the limited edition controller, at least at the time when it came out. I have seen these on eBay in the US, but again, anything that's a Japanese import instantly makes the price go like way up. So this is pretty cool. We're gonna be checking that out. I love clear plastic hardware. Always find this stuff really cool. Uh, the Game Boy Player, obviously, that's the main reason I bought the thing with the disc. There's no picture of the disc on the front here, but the seller did say, that it comes with the disc. If it doesn't, we have a slight problem. Uh, and then a 251 GameCube memory card. One thing that's also worth mentioning is Nintendo did release other GameCube colors in this bundle, but all of them excluded this clear plastic controller. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and open this thing up and take a look at what we've got. So right here, it looks like we've got the, okay, this is looking like some documentation here. So we've got, oh, Interesting. So was this was this imported? Oh, maybe they were trying to sell this on eBay, perhaps. And here's all of your uh, hardware and like safety instructions here. This right here is the operations manual. We've also got this stamp on the back here. I guess this is the is that, is that the the store that sold it? Perhaps. Let's see here. Yeah, that is the store this was purchased at, and their telephone number. So that's that's pretty neat. I know that's not what you guys came here for. Let's actually get to the hardware itself. So here we've got the power adapter. Definitely very important. We'll set that aside here. We've got the Game Boy Player disc here. Here we've got the clear translucent controller which is just really cool to see, because like I said, this was a Japanese exclusive. It was never released here in North America. So very, very cool to look at. So you can see there's the, uh, the board on the inside. Here's a view from the back. And even the uh, connector here that goes to the GameCube is clear. So that's really awesome. And we'll set that aside here. Uh, the other controller, not as exciting, but I mean, hey, it's a GameCube controller. So the silver one that matches the console itself. We've got the Game Boy Player, which I've never owned one of these actually. I always wondered when I was younger what those ports on the bottom were, were used for. And well, one of the things you could use it for was hooking up a Game Boy Player. Uh, so there you go. And here is the main event, the Japanese GameCube itself. Let's see if there's anything else in the box first. I don't believe there is, uh, aside from some bubble wrap which is always uh, much appreciated. So we'll set the box aside there. And yeah, it's a GameCube. I mean, if you've ever owned one of these things here in the West, I mean, there's nothing really special about it other than everything is in Japanese and it can play Japanese games. I mean, I guess that is special if you were into collecting and importing Japanese games. Um, so there you go. There's the model number DOL 101 JPN, made in China. You got your high speed port, serial port. And uh, I believe the high speed port is what the uh, is what the Game Boy Player plugs into. So we'll take that off there. And then we can take our Game Boy Player. And there you go, it's in. And that's how it sits 
on your desk or on your floor or wherever you had your, your GameCube set up and you would just plug your, your Game Boy games into there. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much all there is to it, guys. So we are going to plug this thing in and power it on for the first time since it has left Japan. Um, which is just a really cool thought, you know, because this thing was in Japan for the majority of its life, and this is the first time it's been plugged into a foreign power grid. So let's go ahead and power this thing on. And oh, let me let me get the controller here. Let me plug that in. That would help, wouldn't it? So we'll use our wonderful clear controller. I still really like this thing. This is super cool. And we'll plug that into controller slot number one or port number one. So let's uh, let's power it on here and see if it works, which I'm sure it does, but yeah, there it is. It's powering on, we get that glorious startup screen, and yeah, we don't have a game disc in here, so, you know, not gonna, <laughs> not gonna do anything. But yeah, so we can browse the menu here. Uh, of course, nothing on the, uh, on the memory card menu here. We got nothing put in, so there you go. Uh, let's go to the date here. So, okay, so it looks like this was last regularly used in November of 2017, November 4th, 2017. So we can update this to the current date if we want to. So let's go to, what is it? Today I'm recording this is uh, April 11th. So, oh my gosh. It was set to, <laughs> it was set to 2017, 11.04. And it's April 11th. So, wow, okay, it's kind of a like, oh my gosh, like they know. Um, this right here is your options menu, I believe. Oh, what was this? Let me, let me pull out Google Translate here because I don't, <laughs> I don't remember exactly what this says. So let's just pull up Translate. This is, uh, uh sound and screen horizontal position. I'm sure one of these is mono and stereo. Um, let's see what this says. Yeah, mono, and this is stereo, and then this down here is the, yeah, the screen position. So you can modify that if you want. So I will definitely set this to stereo, and we'll go back here. And we don't have a disc in here, so let's change that. Let's put in the uh, Game Boy Player disc here. So we'll open that up. And we'll pop in. Actually, you know what? First, let me show you what happens if you were curious and if you've never done this before. Let us put in an NTSC game to an NTSC J console. So you can see what happens because it is not going to work. So we'll put in Shibi Robo here. One of the most underrated games of all time, in my opinion. And we'll let it do its thing. It's loading, it's like, oh yeah, we're gonna play a game, let's go. And then, guess what? It's not gonna read it, and I believe this probably says, uh, oh yeah, it just, it just outright says, could not read the disc. It doesn't even come up with a like, this is, this is the wrong region. It's like, I don't even know what this is. So, yeah, there you go. So let's go ahead and pop in the Game Boy Player's software disc here to the drive. We'll close that up, and now we'll be able to read this. And also, something worth mentioning, the Game Boy Player hardware itself technically is not region locked at all, because you can plug this into a North American GameCube or European GameCube, but if you don't have the disc that matches your region, you won't be able to use it, because if you put this disc into a North American console, it's going to do what it just did with a North American game on the Japanese console here, and just say, I can't read the disc. So, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and press start here to load the Game Boy Player software, and it just jumps right into uh, loading whatever's in the slot, which is in this case, nothing, because we got nothing in there. But I believe if we hit... Um, Oh, I guess, yeah, so you hit, um, what is that, Z? It brings up this menu here. And so this is where you can modify a few settings. I believe you can change the uh, border here. So yeah, you can change that. You got all sorts of, uh, of, of options here. So let's set that to like number 13. Um, this here will change the size of the screen. So if you want to make that a little bit smaller there so you can see the uh, the full design. Oh, this is cool. This is a Tetris one. Oh, I'm keeping that one on. Uh, you can change your controls here. So what everything's mapped to. Uh, this here, ooh, what is this? Let's see, let me pull out Google Translate. Um, screen, normal, 
And this other option here is sharp. Uh, and this here is probably, judging from that, um, a timer. Yep, that's exactly what that is. So this is uh, your, your play timer there. And this here, um, what is that? Oh, that's to replace the cartridge. Okay, that makes total sense. So that's for, you know, if you wanted to change games, uh, that essentially acts as like turning off the uh, Game Boy, right? So you're not just yanking the uh, cartridge out while you're in mid-game. So that's what this is for. So you would hit A here, and then you would say yes, and then it would turn off the Game Boy, quote-unquote, and then ask you to put in the new cartridge. And then you would hit A, and then you would uh, load into the new game, and it starts up. Now, unfortunately, I'm sure you guys are wondering why hasn't he put a Game Boy game in yet. Uh, the reason is I don't have any. Well, scratch that. I do have plenty of Game Boy games. They're just not easily accessible at the moment. And that's because, uh, well, I got a pretty big channel update for you guys. But first, I gotta tell you about today's video sponsor, Skillshare, the online learning community with thousands of classes that help you boost your creative skills through interactive video lessons. Whether that be graphic design, video editing, or even programming. What I really like about them is that the entire platform is designed specifically around learning. Classes are split up into multiple sections for convenient viewing with no ad breaks, you know, like this one. One of the first classes I started taking on Skillshare was this one on productivity, by Mike Vardy, which really goes into some good habits that you can implement into your workday, which is so important if you're self-employed or just work from home. And as a special thank you, Skillshare is giving a free one-month trial to the first 1,000 people who click the link down below or use my code MICHAELMJD. So be sure to check them out, and huge thanks again to Skillshare for making this video possible. Alright, so what's the big channel news, and why wasn't there a video last week? Well, I am in the process of moving yeah so things have been kind of hectic lately things have been ramping up recently for sure but uh you know that's that that's the short version of it guys uh so that's why there wasn't a video last week though i am going to make up for it i do have uh, a lot of videos that i that i want to do a couple that i'm working on right now one of them is a vintage computer focused video kind of a retrospective fully scripted really excited about that i teased it over on twitter you can see why that one's been taking so long, because I got a lot of footage to go through. And the other video is, well, why I bought this entire thing in the first place. So, I do have some Game Boy games on the way that, at least one of them, is unlike any other Game Boy game that you've seen before. Believe me when I say that, I'm not exaggerating. It is like, <laughs> it's just one of the one of the coolest uh, ideas that I've seen in a while. Uh, so uh, yeah, that'll be coming soon. Stay tuned for that. And this whole setup here will be changing soon as well over the course of the next couple of months. That's gonna be cool. I'm very excited about it. Uh, just, yeah, a lot of, lot of awesome stuff happening, guys. This is gonna be a great year for the channel. Um, so just, yeah, stay tuned. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, notifications, all that good stuff. And as always, I wanna thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.